In the unfolding drama of Canadian politics, the national conversation has become overwhelmingly dominated by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's latest economic proposal. This initiative, which critics describe as sprinkling economic relief like fairy dust across the nation, is wrapped in the promise of a $250 rebate designed for hardworking Canadians. The rhetoric around this policy has sparked a nationwide debate, with fervent discussions erupting in living rooms, radio shows, and newspaper editorials. Economists, political commentators, and citizens alike are scrambling to decipher the broader implications of such a plan. Critical voices deride the initiative as a populist move that lacks depth and foresight, questioning whether the narrative of relief for hardworking Canadians is more style than substance. At the heart of the discontent is the palpable tension surrounding Trudeau's decision not to extend this relief to groups that have often found themselves marginalized in social policy, namely seniors and those living with disabilities. These groups, excluded from the financial boon, are voicing feelings of abandonment and have become rallying points for broader discussions on inequality and the social safety net in Canada. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Delving deeper into the mechanics of Trudeau's rebate plan reveals its precarious balance, teetering under scrutiny from various corners. Critics from opposition factions, particularly the Conservatives and several former Bank of Canada governors, have wasted no time in dismissing this tactic as a fleeting gimmick. Their comparisons to distributing candy, albeit with inevitable cavities looming, paint a stark picture of perceived consequences. These critiques highlight concerns about the ephemeral nature of such economic strategies and suggest that more subtle, enduring policies might be preferable for voter engagement. For oppositional voices, the $250 rebate stands as a symbol of what they argue is Trudeau's superficial economic policymaking. Conservative voices, including longstanding party members, assert that this financial injection is akin to addressing a drought with a brief rainfall, failing to ensure that the roots can consume and benefit from the moisture. It is further argued that small, temporary stimuli will only result in short-term consumer confidence without correcting much deeper systemic economic issues. Is, is this package in and of itself, in your view, inflationary? I don't think that the, the most important question is, is it a package that is likely to raise the incomes and the real standard of living uh, of Canadians? And the answer is that it's it's a bit of candy today uh, uh, with borrowed money, uh, but it does nothing, nothing to raise the incomes and the productivity of Canadians going forward. So it, for, in straight economic terms, it's a bad package. Uh, it's a little bit today uh, for a lot more pain tomorrow. I guess why I ask about whether or not it's inflationary is because the government, uh, the government's messaging around this is it's a bit of relief, right? For, for people who may have an income, but and, and this is a very common feeling expressed to me, who are working, who have an income, but still feel like they are struggling really to to stay on top of things they're not thriving they're they're surviving is there something inherently wrong with trying to cut canadians a bit of a break uh it, inherently no but it's a little candy today for pain down the road so uh what you're playing to what the politicians are playing to is the sort of short term uh, sense, uh, the myopia that people have about uh, about what's going to happen. We've got a problem as we face down the road with the fact that our incomes are not rising. And we've got that problem because we've been borrowing money to hand out a little bit of goodies today, this $1.6 billion uh, that's on offer, uh, without making the investments. Uh, that need to be made so that Canadians can earn more in the future. Observers of the Trudeau administration voiced their apprehensions, pointing to the exclusion of those without recent pay stubs, effectively forming an exclusive group and leaving non-working seniors and individuals with disabilities out in the cold. This exclusion is sometimes likened to extending a dinner invitation to a lavish affair while omitting their seats altogether, leaving them stranded at a hypothetical, to-be-determined table. As public discontent swells, there is a growing sentiment that these policies are disconnected from a genuine appraisal of societal needs. 
the programs that we're delivering, whether it's dental care, whether it's uh, uh, pharma care with uh, free insulin or free uh, prescription contraceptives, whether it's more spaces and $10 a day child care uh, that is saving families thousands of dollars, whether it's dental care that's taken huge pressures off of primarily seniors' budgets, uh, but also others. These are things that are making a difference. Uh, but at the same time, Canadians are still struggling to get by. These, pressure, these uh, elements have taken off pressures, but there is more to do. As the holidays approach, families, especially parents, are particularly worried. Canadians have been through a lot. They work hard. We see that. We've been able to uh, get through the past couple of years. Everyone had to tighten their belts a little bit. And now we're going to be able to give a tax break for all Canadians. For two months, starting December 14th, we're going to remove the GST, HST from groceries, 100% of groceries, all groceries. We're going to remove the GST from restaurant meals, takeouts, fast food. Removing the GST from beer and wine. Removing the GST for essentials like kids' clothing, footwear, diapers, and toys. All tax-free. Removing the GST and HST. For two months, Canadians are going to get a real break on everything they do. We also know that there's more we need to do particularly for working Canadians. So if you worked in 2023 and earned up to $150,000, we're going to be sending you a check for $250 in just a few months. Our government can't set prices at checkout, but we can put more money in people's pockets. The working Canadians rebate of $250, which will be uh, sent to people in April, He's going to give people that relief they need and the tax break uh, over the next two months is going to help on the costs of everything as we approach the holidays, as we get into the new year. These are things that recognize that people are squeezed and we're there to help. On the other side of the aisle, the NDP and Bloc Québécois have taken steps toward inclusivity, advocating for a more holistic and comprehensive approach to economic relief. Their stance is founded on the belief that economic assistance is a fundamental right for all, regardless of employment status. They emphasize the importance of ensuring that the benefits of economic stimulus are distributed evenly across the societal spectrum, arguing that focusing solely on wage earners neglects a sizable portion of the population. As these debates intensify, Canadian citizens are left to watch the proceedings with a mix of hope and skepticism, wary of falling into a repetitive cycle of transient solutions that offer little in terms of substantive change. Further adding to the national discussion is the proposal for a GST holiday, slated for a brief appearance in December. Conservatives have derisively commented on this measure, likening it to arriving with a fire extinguisher only after the flames have died down. We want to get it done as quickly as possible. And people are saying that they are really squeezed when it comes to the cost of living. So we want to see this motion passed or this bill passed as quickly as possible. So we'll get it done in one day. Don't you, and you, don't make this don't you need Canada's consent from the House to do a one day pause? No, what we're prepared to do is uh, make sure that there is enough time in the House to get this passed in one day. Uh, you can speak with our House leader for more details, but this is what we're proposing. We don't want to let the Liberals off the hook, but we want to see some relief for middle class families, for working class families. We're prepared to do that. You said you'd make this measure permanent. Would you keep that $150,000 salary cap? I mean, to me, those people aren't really hurting right now. No, what we had proposed was to have the GST removed from daily essentials and bills. We would this tax holiday, aimed at invigorating retail activities, raises its own set of questions. Intrigue looms. Will this temporary tax break address the multitude of economic challenges currently faced by Canadians, or is it merely a temporary bomb for deeper issues? Within Trudeau's own circle, reactions have been mixed. Some allies critique the move as seeming theatrical, a performance that prioritizes appearance over substance. Key voices, echoing renowned economists, stress that the fundamental challenge is income stagnation. Addressing this issue demands comprehensive reform rather than piecemeal efforts that barely scratch the surface. Even among the staunchest liberal supporters, there is acknowledgement that fostering transient incentives by accruing debt may not exemplify sound economic stewardship. 
Yet, it remains within the halls of the House of Commons, an arena where political maneuvering hits fever pitch, where Trudeau's rhetoric, ostensibly dismissing electoral motivations, inadvertently rekindles the fire of political discourse. I very much care about electoral reform. I've been very clear that I would bring in a ranked ballot tomorrow if we had that option. But really, to see the NDP turning its back on workers right now, uh, asking a question about electoral reform when Canadians are worried about whether or not uh, the opposition parties are going to support the tax break that they need or the investments in workers that they deserve, right now uh, we need a party and a, a parliament that is focused on helping and supporting Canadians as they get us all through this difficult time with their hard work, with their ambition, and right now talking about politics is the last thing Canadians want to see from this House. The journey of the GST break continues, having successfully passed through the House but still awaiting the crucial Senate approval. The stakes are significant and the air is thick with anticipation as Canadians await the fate of the proposed $250 check. Within the corridors of power and beyond, political analysts and insiders speculate on the outcome of this intricate political dance wondering how Trudeau's strategy will unfold on Canada's political stage. This confluence of policy proposals not only challenges economic norms, but also calls into question the future trajectory of Canadian socioeconomic policy, with potential ripple effects that could redefine party dynamics and public trust in government. The unfolding political narrative not only has domestic audiences on tenterhooks, but also has international observers watching with keen interest, curious to see how Canada navigates its self-imposed economic conundrums. As the proverbial dust settles from the recent political tug of war, Canadians are left to ponder the lasting impact of Trudeau's financial measures. The emerging consensus seems to highlight that focusing relief efforts on specific groups borders on being discriminatory and possibly prioritizes political optics over practical benefits. Voices from grassroots movements to high-level policy advisors are demanding a re-evaluation of priorities, underscoring the need for prudence and sustainability. A chorus of voices nationwide calls for sustainable, long-term economic solutions in place of these quick fixes. For the Trudeau administration, the imperative is clear. Reassess and carefully consider the enduring effects these measures may engender. Whether through the short-lived allure of the $250 rebate or the fleeting GST holiday, the pressing challenge lies in crafting economic policies that address inclusivity without further exacerbating fiscal deficits there is a growing recognition that immediate and inclusive dialogue with forgotten demographics might be key to not only addressing immediate fiscal challenges, but also ensuring durable prosperity for future generations. The stage of Canadian politics remains set, filled with anticipation for forthcoming policies that promise to be as contentious and theatrical as those currently under debate. The path forward appears fraught with complexity, demanding careful analysis, consensus building, and innovative thinking to navigate. Well, that's all for now. Do you think the initiatives on the table are sufficient to tackle the economic challenges at hand? Or is a more substantial fiscal overhaul needed to achieve meaningful and lasting progress? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.